In track and field, the gap between good and great can come down to a few hundredths of a second. In no other sport are the margins to greatness so fine. Certainly, you got you got to have a talent. You know, the difference between good and great usually is a, it's some work. You have to have some God-given uh, speed. You have to have a big heart, and you have to be mentally ready, tough, and like I say, have the heart of a lion. Few athletes have possessed these qualities more than Carl Lewis. With his unique combination of talent and personality, he redefined his sport. Carl was blessed with a great deal of talent. He, he had it all. The combination of his mind and his body, there, you don't find very many people like that. He is phenomenal. On July the 29th, 1996, Carl Lewis entered the history books with this jump. He equaled the then Olympic record of nine gold medals by winning his fourth long jump title. At the age of 35, America's greatest ever athlete was now an Olympic legend. He'd done it and took care of his body and ate right and done the things he had to do to still compete. That's why he was an inspiration to me because he was still giving some of these young guys the business. We weren't looking for world records. We were only looking for winning and longevity, you know, with him. He was a great athlete, and, uh, and he, he knew where he wanted to go, and he went there and didn't let anything major come in between him and his goals. Frederick Carlton Lewis was born in 1961, the youngest son of a sports-mad family. It was at Willingborough High School in New Jersey that he showed his initial potential. Not a strong looking kid, looked immature to me, but he had all the, the indication that he was going to be a good sprinter. And then I just forgot about him. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know he, whether he long jumped or anything, but I just remember him. By the time he graduated from high school, Carl Lewis was one of the hottest properties in athletics. But it was the unlikely setting of Houston, Texas that would play center stage to the aspiring long jumper and sprinter. Athletics coach Tom Tellez persuaded Lewis to join him at the University of Houston. I couldn't believe it. I just about dropped when he said he was interested. I called him again and I said, well, how do you feel about the visit? And he said, I'm coming. Just like that, I'm coming. The move to Houston was perfect for Lewis. He established himself as one of the most talented up and coming figures in US track and field but it would take time for him to develop as a sprinter. I was not interested in his sprinting ability. I said, if you want to run on the relays, it's up to you. If you want to sprint, that's up to you. I just want you to long jump. That's what I want you to do here. I pretty much seen Carl as a long jumper, although he could sprint. I would outrun Carl in the 100 meters with no problem. And to me, you know, Carr, his sophomore year, Carr started running very fast. From that point on, you know, Carr was moving. <laughs> so, yeah, I found myself chasing the guy who I thought was a long jumper. Lewis had made the U.S. team for the 1980 Olympics, but America's subsequent boycott of the Games meant he would have to wait to gain international recognition. In 1982, he broke through, becoming the world's best long jumper. And a real force in the 100 meters. The secret was that uh, he, he's, he's an outstanding athlete. He, he's got a great mind for an athlete. He was a great kid to coach, unbelievable kid to coach. He did everything I asked him to do. He could simplify everything I told him to and then go out and execute it, just, just like that, he could execute. I think the difference is, is his commitment, total commitment to the sport, his vision of where he wanted to go, and he would not let anything interfere with that. In 1983, as the World Championships in Helsinki approached, Lewis improved himself more than just a long jumper. His rivalry with 100 meter world record holder and US teammate Calvin Smith was just beginning. We definitely was not teammates or anything of that nature. You know, running, um, 
Against Carl, one knew that you know they had to be ready to go. Smith may have felt he could match his rival, but there was only going to be one winner in Helsinki. Lewis powered home to become the inaugural World 100 Meter Champion. It was his mentality that was most impressive, though. Here was a young athlete going for gold in three events, utterly fearless. Well, I don't think there's any pressure. I mean, I think the only pressure, if there is some in my life, would be not to compete in my events because I'm competing at less of a level. Uh, I have expectations of myself. I don't think there's any pressure on me to do anything. I do what I feel happy with, and I wouldn't feel happy with not competing in the 100 and long jump. Lewis went on to win the long jump and then anchored the 4x100 relay team to gold. It was an unprecedented three gold medal haul. Carl Lewis was now the biggest star in the sport of track and field. I feel very proud. Uh, you know, Carl has worked very hard in his time. I don't think that it has gone to his head. I think he is still the same old Carl that he was when he was still at home. But uh, he has come a long ways in terms of his athletic uh, skills in track and field. But Carl Lewis wanted more. Four Olympic golds was his target, a feat not achieved since Jesse Owens in 1936. I never coached anyone that won four gold medals. I never talked to Jesse Owens' coach or Jesse Owens about how do you win four gold medals. So, you know, I'm, I'm flying by the seat of my pants figuring out what we're going to do to win four gold medals. I didn't want him to do four gold medals, win, try to win. I just wanted him to win one, the long jump. I didn't care about anything else. I kind of felt at the time, but the way Carr had been competing in long jump, the sprints, I, I, I actually thought he could pull it off. In 1984, the Olympics were on home territory in Los Angeles. The ideal stage for Lewis to join Owens in the record books. The first event to win was the 100 meters. There was no Calvin Smith, and Lewis's main rival, another American, Sam Grady, was brushed aside, along with the rest of the field. In 84, Grady was a great starter. I mean, he was gone, he was out there. But Carl just ran his own race. Carl knew that he had the ability to accelerate and beat Grady. With one goal secured, next up was Lewis's best event, the long jump. He needed only one jump to win. But his decision not to complete his full quota of attempts did his public image no favors. Six jumps will take a lot out of you. And, uh, you know, and you can get hurt. Anything can happen. And then you're not able to run the 200 or the relay. And, you know, there's a lot of things you have to think about. Set. If the public weren't amused, the decision to jump only once paid off. Lewis had added the 200 meters to his repertoire since winning three goals in 1983. His training partner at Houston, Kurt Baptiste, looked set to end the four goal dream though. But, as he would so often do in his career, Lewis came through in the final stages of the 200 meters. Carl was pretty much established in the sport. And I think Kurt being a little younger, he looked over and seen King Carl on the outside and he fell apart, and Carl ended up winning. With the best sprinters in the world, a US victory in the 4x100 meter relay was a formality. It was fitting that Lewis should anchor the team to glory, as he took his place in Olympic history. I knew that with the four of us, that we should have no problem uh, coming with a, uh, winning a gold medal. And that is exactly what we did. And we also set a world record in the process of getting that gold medal. But my main concern was for, for me and not necessarily what Carl would do. Well, I feel great because people want to put me up there. But to me, Jesse Owens is a legend. I don't think I can ever match him. And that's special to me because there's somebody that I can always look up to. Well, what's left for me is just to be go out respected. Everybody looks up to me right now and they think that I'm the best thing in track and field. So I just want to prove that I am and to prove that I can help the sport and be a role model. Olympic champion, Carl Lewis. At just 23, he'd already achieved what some thought near impossible, four Olympic gold medals. He could now be rightfully compared